Hey, what's up YouTube? Let's talk about the ketogenic diet, the diet that makes it sound like you should put butter in your coffee while eating tons of bacon. Ketogenic diets are extremely trendy, but it actually didn't start from all those keto freaks on the internet preaching keto as this new gospel. It actually started way back around the 1920s by doctors who used it to treat children with epilepsy. Given how money-hungry zealots love to over-exaggerate claims and take them out of context, you end up with the trends of fitness marketers taking a diet specifically for treating a rare disease in children to trying to sell this diet to the masses as the best diet to get you lean and jacked. Now, while I do think it's kind of cruel to steal a diet that was meant for epileptic children for our own selfish gain, I'm actually not against people who choose to go keto. I am, however, against lies, scams, and people making claims that just aren't scientifically true. So let's get into what the ketogenic diet is, what compels people to do it, if it can make you lean, and what the actual evidence says about all things keto. A ketogenic diet is a diet in which about 75% of caloric intake is from fat. The remainder is protein and carbs, with carbs usually being under 5% of total intake with the goal to enter the state of dietary ketosis. Now let's define ketosis. Ketosis is the state in which blood ketone levels are much higher than normal, usually due to dietary changes. Basically, this is all just fancy talk for saying ketosis is where instead of your body using glucose and fat as a primary fuel source, you use primarily fat and ketones. Many ketogenic zealots will take this information and say things like, your body is now a fat burning furnace where you can finally lose weight and look hot effortlessly, bro. You can also eat butter and bacon forever. These claims are highly over-exaggerated, so here are facts about the ketogenic diet these keto freaks won't ever tell you. Fact number one, most people who think they're in ketosis aren't in ketosis. There's a difference between a ketogenic diet and a low-carb diet. If you're not in ketosis, you're just doing another low-carb diet, not an actual ketogenic diet. Ketosis is a very difficult process to attain for most people, especially beginners. An actual ketogenic diet, like I said, is generally about 75% fat, 20% protein, and practically no carbs. This needs to be maintained for at the very minimum a few consistent days to get into this fat adapted state um, we talked about called ketosis. This means it just takes a minimal amount of unforeseen sugar in a sauce or just a tiny bit too much protein to easily kick you out of ketosis. Not to mention most people end up straying from their diet when they're out with friends and family. They end up eating meals containing too many carbs or protein, which undoubtedly takes you out of ketosis or further prevents you from entering ketosis. So hypothetically speaking, even if you only splurge on one non-keto meal once per week and everything else is perfect the rest of the week, you're literally kicking yourself out of ketosis and spending half the week trying to get back into it, assuming you're one of the few people who are actually doing everything perfect. Speaking of perfect, the only real way to know you're in ketosis besides blood work is urine strips, which most people don't do anyways. So to sum up my first point, which I know is a long one, but it's a good point, is most keto zealots aren't even in ketosis because they're not properly tracking calories slash macros consistently. They consume more carbs and protein than they think. They splurge on the weekends just like everybody else and they don't use test strips, which means there's no way to prove you're actually in ketosis. Fact number two, if you lost fat on keto, it's not because of ketosis. Let's say you are one of the few people that are actually doing keto right and have entered consistent ketosis. It still doesn't guarantee fat loss. Whether you're in ketosis or not, being in a caloric deficit is still required, meaning you still have to eat less total calories than you burn. Many people are drawn to the keto diet because they think they can eat whatever they want in any amount as long as it has zero carbs. Sorry, but being in ketosis doesn't give you the excuse to turn your diet into a never-ending bacon buffet. Calories still matter. Dr. Andy Galpin, when talking about keto, states, there are no physiological shortcuts. Calories still matter. And while they aren't the only thing that matter, for fat loss, you still have to maintain a caloric deficit to lose fat. So if you lost weight or know someone that lost weight on keto, it's because of a caloric deficit, not because carbs are fattening and not because they're in ketosis. By cutting out carbs and doing keto, people aren't able to eat many high calorie foods, thus resulting in a caloric deficit that they're usually unaware of. 
This caloric deficit is what causes the weight loss you see with keto success stories. Fact number three, you burn more fat on keto, but you also store more fat. It's true that you do burn more fat on keto, but no one talks about the fact that you also store more fat on keto. Keto freaks will preach over and over and over how you burn more fat on keto. Yes, they're technically right, but burning fat isn't the same thing as losing fat. What most people actually care about is losing fat off their body, not just simply burning fat for fuel. Losing fat means you burn more total fat than you store, also called net fat loss. Net fat loss only occurs through a caloric deficit, as we've already discussed. And if you're wondering, does net fat loss occur more in keto or a traditional higher carb diet? The answer is that they're the same. Endless studies and reviews have shown unanimously when calories and protein are the same, the fat to carb ratio makes no difference. Fact number four, many people fail the ketogenic diet. The ketogenic diet seems amazing because a coworker you know and a few famous celebrities did great on it. But what you don't see is all the millions of people that failed it. It's very restrictive and hard to stick to. It most definitely can work if it gets you into a caloric deficit. But keep in mind, just because it worked for your friend doesn't mean it'll work for you. Fact number five, most of the early weight you lose isn't fat. Because you are no longer providing significant carbs to your body, you will be depleting your glycogen stores, meaning the stored glucose in your body is making an exit. Every gram of glycogen is bound to three grams of water. So as you start a ketogenic diet, most of the early weight you lose is just water. Many people will take this point as a negative, but in many clients I've seen this as a positive because even though the early weight loss is mostly water, the rapid changes in the scale can spark motivation in people, especially those who tend to give up on fat loss when scale weight doesn't go down right away. Fact number six, your brain, organs, and muscle prefer glycogen as a fuel source. In order to go keto, you must deplete your body of glycogen by severely restricting carbs and protein in order to produce ketones as a fuel source. This is why many people experience what's called the keto flu, where you feel sick when your body first tries to adapt to using fat slash ketones as a fuel source instead of glucose slash glycogen. Even after their bodies finally adapt, they're still using a compromised fuel source as carbohydrates are most optimal for brain power and intense exercise. So go on keto if you want, but research has made it clear carbs are the ideal fuel source for brain power, organ function, and exercise. Fact number seven, keto isn't optimal for performance. And speaking of exercise, exercise performance is one of the most crucial components of changing your body or performing at a high level in sports. Carbs, as we mentioned, play a key role in enhancing performance. Here are a laundry list of studies showing carbs are ideal for performance and extreme carb restriction can negatively impact performance. Fact number eight, keto isn't optimal for building muscle. Keto has some merit for fat loss, but for muscle building, it's far from the ideal diet as we already mentioned how important carbs are for the performance of lifting weights as well as protein being very important for building muscle. On keto, you get far from the ideal amounts of these two nutrients to build muscle. This randomized controlled trial also showed keto is not ideal for building muscle. To be clear, I'm not saying it's impossible to build muscle on a ketogenic diet. It's definitely still possible, just not very wise. And so to recap, if you're looking to maximize performance or muscle growth, keto definitely is not ideal. If you're looking to lose fat, keto can definitely be an option, but it's not inherently superior to any other diet. Keto isn't magic. It works by creating a consistent caloric deficit, just like every other diet. Some of my clients have gone keto with success because a higher fat approach helped suppress their appetite more. But in general, for most people, it's difficult to sustain for long periods of time because, well, carbs are delicious. If you prefer higher fat foods and can sustain a ketogenic diet, I would highly recommend it. But remember, it's not anything magical. On the other hand, if you're like me and enjoy eating carbs, there are plenty of diets that'll get you great fat loss results as well as letting you enjoy potatoes and cookies. That's all for this video. I hope you learned something valuable. If you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and do that as more future videos will be rolling out on all sorts of topics. I'll see you next time, YouTube. Peace.